In this video, you will learn what are polynomials. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to master topics on algebra, start right now by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. So now, before we have a look at what are polynomials, let's start by having a look at what are terms. So a term is basically a mathematical expression that consists of a number and a variable multiplied together. But often in algebra, we don't show this multiplication sign because if there is no arithmetic sign between a number and a variable, then it's considered to be multiplication because multiplication is the default operation. So the number part can be anything. It can be 17, 8, or even 0 0.5. So it can be anything. But there's a specific name that we call the number part, the coefficient. Since we now know that the number part is the coefficient, let's move on to the variable. So in terms of the variable, one or more variables raised to a power. So for example, y squared or x. And you guys may wonder, x is not actually raised to a power. Well, x is the same as x to the power of 1. Another example could be x to the power of 4 times n to the power of 4. Since we now have a look at the number part and the variable part, now let's go on to see what are polynomials. It's a collection of many terms joined together with addition or subtraction. So polynomials is basically a collection of many terms and they're joined together by addition or subtraction. Another thing to know about polynomials is that they can be made from any number of terms joined together. And there are even some specific names for some terms. And if there's only one term, then it's called a monomial. If there are two terms, then it's called a binomial. Three terms, it's called a trinomial. If there are four or more terms, then it's called a polynomial. Now, let's have a look at a typical polynomial, which is 5x raised to the power of 5 minus x plus 8. And in this, we're missing something. And we're missing something in terms of the x and in terms of the 8. And if you guys are wondering what we're missing, well, in the x, we're actually missing the number part or the coefficient. In 8, we're missing the variable. So now, we know for the x, there's actually a number there. Because if you guys remember, there's actually a number in front of the x. We just can't see it. And we know that every number has a factor of 1. And multiplying a number by 1 doesn't change the value. So the thing to remember here is that whenever you just have the variable and not the number part, it's always a 1 in front of the variable. So now, what about the 8 then? Well, as we said before, for the 8, we're missing the variable. And we know that raising something to a power of 0 just equals 1. So what if we use the x as our variable and raise that to a power of 0? And if you guys are wondering why, well, we know that 8x to the power of 0 and x to the power of 0 is basically 1. So that means 1 does not change the value. So since we now know that x to the power of 0 is actually 1, and in a term we're multiplying the number to the variable, so we're doing 8 times x to the power of 0, in other words, we're doing 8 times 1. And 8 times 1 is the same as 8. So you don't really have to write the x to the power of 0, but it's there to show you that there is a variable. So now, if you guys notice, we're still missing something. We're missing something with the 1x. Well, we know that a variable is one or more variables raised to a power. And if you notice, 1x is not being raised to the power. Well, we know that any number raised to the first power is just itself. So that means we actually have a power for the x. We just have a 1, but we just can't see it. So we actually have x to the power of 1. And once again, we don't have to show the 1 because it doesn't change the value. So now, let's have a look at something that's really important in polynomials and is called the degree. Well, the degree is determined by the power of the variable in the term. So what does this mean? Well, the degree is basically determined by the power of the variable in the term. 
So let's have a look at an example to get a better understanding. And the example we have here are 2x to the power of 3, 8z to the power of 2, 4a to the power of 1, and 5z to the power of 0. We can see that in 2x to the power of 3, we are racing to a power of 3. So that means this is a third degree term. And then for 8z to the power of 2, we're racing to a power of 2. So that means this is a second degree term. 4a to the power of 1, well, this is a first degree term. So now, you guys may wonder that 5z raised to the power of 0 is a zeroth degree term. But it's not actually called a zeroth degree term, it's called a constant term. So now, let's have a look at this one we have right here, which is 8z raised to the power of 3, 5z to the power of 4. So you guys may wonder which one is obviously, do we refer to the degree? Is it 3? Or 4. Well, in this case, you just add the two exponents, which are 3 and 4. So when you add the 3 and 4, it's obviously going to get 7. So that means this is a 7th degree term. So whenever you have a term where there are more than one variable raised to a power, so you have two powers, in this case we have 3 and 4, all you do is you add those two to find the degree of the term. And polynomials are also called by the degree of the highest term. So for example, such as 5x raised to the power of 5 plus 4y raised to the power of 3. And in this, we're going to choose the highest degree term. And if there's only a fifth degree term, and this is the highest term, and there are no higher term than a fifth degree term, then that means this is a fifth degree polynomial. Or, for example, 3x raised to the power of 4 plus 4y raised to the power of 8. In this, the highest degree term is obviously an 8. It's an 8th degree term is the highest one. So that means this is an 8 degree polynomial. Another reason that degree is used because it is also used for arrangements. What do we mean by that? We normally write a polynomial from the highest degree term to the lowest degree term. So we write it from the highest degree term to the lowest degree term. So here we have a polynomial, which is 1 plus 5z squared plus z raised to the power of 4 plus z plus 8z to the power of 3. Sometimes you may get a polynomial where they're not arranged in the correct order, starting from 1 plus 5z raised to the power of 2 plus z raised to the power of 4 plus z plus 8z raised to the power of 3. And we need to obviously arrange them in the correct order, starting from the highest degree term to the lowest degree term. The highest degree term is z raised to the power of 4. The lowest degree term is just 1. The thing to remember is that not every polynomials have a term of every degree. For example, 6x to the power of 6 minus 4 plus x. This one does not have a term of every degree. But it's totally fine for polynomials to have missing terms, just like this one. But that doesn't mean it should stop us from arranging this in order. We still have to arrange this in order from the highest degree term to the lowest degree term. The highest degree term being 6x to the power of 6, and then the lowest degree term being minus 4. Now, a thing to remember when arranging terms in a polynomial is that you have to be careful of whether it's a negative or a positive. But you still have to arrange it from the highest degree term to the lowest degree term. But you have to remember whether it's positive or negative. We can see that 4x to the power of 2 is obviously the highest degree term because it's a second degree term, which is the highest degree term in this polynomial. But what if I told you that this is actually negative 4x raised to the power of 2. You guys may wonder how. Well, we determine whether a term is negative or positive by the sign in front of it. Because 4x raised to the power of 2 has a minus sign before it, it means it's negative. So now, you may ask the question, what about 3? It has no sign in front of it. Well, in this case, when you have no sign in front of a number or a term, you just consider it to be positive. You just consider it to be a plus there. Therefore, we have positive 3. Since we now know this, we can start off by arranging this from the highest degree term to the lowest. We first move the minus 4x squared, then we move the plus x, and finally the plus 3. Now to learn more on algebra, click the video on the right. And to learn the previous topic, click the video on the left. So take your pick. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.